Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and today in Cyberpunk 2077 we are going to start talking about districts we have in the game and the first one I wanted to cover is Watson, one of the most important areas on the map and the starting area for the game, so let's get into it. Watson District is situated in the northwest part of Night City and is made from smaller areas like Arasaka Waterfront, Little China, Kabuki and Northside Industrial District. So one thing we had seen in most of the gameplay videos CDPR released was actually from Watson. The demos people had to play were actually in Watson and this is also the location of your apartment in the game. I do believe the building we see in the weapons trailer is the one we are actually in and this is where V is going to have his or hers only apartment in the game. Now Watson itself was a beautiful place to live in before and after the fourth corporate war as the city was being rebuilt, many Japanese corporations had great plans for it and poured millions and millions of dollars into it, making skyscrapers, nightclubs, cafes, restaurants, a medical center which is the top notch hospital for everything and they even had their own industrial zone called the Northside Industrial District. So what happened? Why does it look like a decrepit hellhole now? Well, Saburo Arasaka happened, he had his own plans and that meant for all competition to go away, to be eradicated. So after the unification war, when Arasaka came back to Night City, everyone else had to go and only Arasaka would be among the top. I mean, when it comes to other smaller corporations, well, they were gone. So when everyone left, funding stopped and people lost their jobs and what Arasaka got as a reward, well, they took over the waterfront, making it the Arasaka waterfront. And the NID, the industrial zone, well, you still have a few operational factories there and, you know, there are still people in that industrial zone, but it's not even close to where it was supposed to actually be. They basically placed roadblocks outside of the district because it's easier to keep the poor inside and they don't want the filth of the city, in their words, to go to the city center or anywhere else, that's why during the prologue of the game you have these roadblocks but later you won't have problems with it, the entire city is going to be open for you to explore along with the Badlands. Now let's take a closer look at Little China, that part of Watson was one of the most important areas of the district itself with many shops, skyscrapers and medical clinics were here. It was the place in Night City to come here and spend money on augmentations, legal ones of course. And in 2040s it was flooded with Asian immigrants, but mainly Chinese and that's how it got the name. Of course, now you don't only have Asians here, you also have other ethnicities and races, so the entire social structure changed and evolved in a sense, but most of the stuff you can see like neon signs etc are in Chinese and Sadly, from that amazing life before, now it's one of the poorest districts in the city. Legal and illegal jobs here are all mixed up, so you will now see, let's say, a legitimate business, and right by it, you will have the illegal one, since police basically don't even bother that much in Watson. You have certain detectives which come here and search for missing people and certain augmentations, but that's pretty much it, you won't have that much police presence in the area. You will have some, but not to a huge extent as you would have in other, let's say, districts of the city. You even have low to mid-tier corpos coming here for some cheap fun, but at the same time it's a good hiding place to disappear, even though if a corpo wants to track you down, they will track you down. Generally, Little China is not claimed by anyone but Tiger Claws come here in a sense, so it's their district but only unofficially. Now let's jump over to Kabuki, which was before the pride of Japanese medical corporations. This part of the district is adjacent to the Grand Medical Center that I talked about, and the reason why I mentioned this medical center a lot, because at that time, to have a huge medical center, 
is something insane for a district, insane for a city, and that's when actually the district itself starts making money because you have various important people coming there. And, you know, because of that, because of the Grand Medical Center and um, all of the clinics um, that were situated adjacent to it, the entire area was safe and filled with jobs and high-end, you know, clinics and whatever. But, of course, after Arasaka destroyed all competition, everything closed down and they became poor. Now, the difference between Watson and Pacifica is that, yes, Watson is poor, Pacifica is poor, but one of them is considered a working district, and that is Watson. Pacifica is basically abandoned by everyone, it's just a gang territory and a combat zone at the same time, so, honestly, Watson is a nicer place compared to to Pacifica, even though Watson is one of the poorest areas in Night City. Now, since Kabuki is populated with mostly Chinese, you have various uh, CD cosmetic boutiques and uh, cheap junk shops and whatever, all decorated with Chinese lampions and neon lights. Also, Kabuki is the most popular black market in Night City, I mean, one of the most popular ones. In that black market, you can find everything. Organs, augmentations, steroids, synth viruses, brain dance recordings, weapons, armor, everything you need, but everything here is illegal. In Kabuki, you also have various Ripper doctors that sell military grade and prototype cyberware. And that's like top notch stuff from like Scandinavian clinics because they are the best in Chiba City. But let me tell you one thing about augmentations, for example. Most Ripper doctors, not all of them, but most of them, buy their stuff from scavs. And well, scavs take people away, they basically take the parts away from them and resell them so they harvest, well, the augmentations and organs and everything, so I wouldn't be surprised if something you put in yourself belonged to someone else a while back. Now let's take a look at the Northside Industrial Districts, or as we're going to call it from now on, NID. When Watson was being rebuilt, Corpos had insane plans for that district, as they did with everything else. Many people came to work, since surviving in a dystopian universe is not easy, so having a stable job is more than important. Of course, stuff happened again, Arasaka happened again, ruining companies. It also seems that there was uh, even an earthquake a while back, which damaged the zone. And when also investors ran away, only a handful of companies still operate there, and the situation is not looking well. There is basically a saying, if you were born in NID, you die in NID, so people there don't really stand a chance of succeeding in life or going anywhere else. Some corpo buildings are still present there though, and managers of those companies, well the remaining ones, still live there in a sense, so it shows you this insane difference of being in a great corpo apartment but in a very bad neighborhood. So every time you step out from your beautiful apartment, as soon as you step out of the door, it's hellhole. This area is also the Maelstrom territory, so if you actually want to be there, get ready to deal with them, as well as, you know, other bandits and vagabonds. But it will be interesting to see what happens here, you know, during the night, and if we decide to go there then. Especially, I want to see the difference between night and day, and um, if the gang presence is going to be... Well, if, it, if there is going to be more gang presence during the night, so yeah, very interesting. And for the end, we have the Arasaka waterfront, which is the bulwarked island, which belongs to, well, Arasaka. This area is actually one of the most important areas of the Corpos here, because it's a local supply chain. Every month you have hundreds of shipments and packages coming there, which are later distributed to other corporate areas. If you were thinking of going there, think again. The entire area is walled off to keep people away, then you have the soldiers in full military grade equipment and cyberware patrolling the area, defense turrets, metal detectors, you name it. So if you step inside without a permission, the chances of getting out are very slim. On that note, I can't wait to get into the waterfront uninvited and also see what force they will have for V. This could also be an important story segment, uh, we shall see how they handle it, but don't expect to go in there straight away, they won't let you in, and plus everyone else at that um, waterfront is probably going to be high level. And this was the lore for Watson District in Cyberpunk 2077, thank you so much for watching, I'm going to make these uh, lore videos for each district because um, I think it's uh, going to be a really nice way 
for you to get to know the district before you actually get into the game. I took a small break over the weekend, but now I am back and ready to make more videos. So don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. And also tell me down below what is your favorite district so far. Also join our growing community on Twitter and Discord. And also I made a Patreon page if you were looking for an extra way to support the channel. You can do it through there. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out and stay classy everyone. Bye bye.